Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to take your skyline video shots and turn them into a double universe effect. So a lot of you guys requested this a while ago when this noisy Atlanta episode came out on Viceland, where in the opening sequence, you see this cool drone shot with a reflected universe look. So that's where the inspiration for this tutorial is coming from and a really cool example of how you might use this effect in a project. So in order to start off, the most important thing is having a good clip to work with. This is gonna work best on skyline shots, especially if you're using a drone, it'll be really good to get that half clear blue sky and half cityscape. Also, the more clear and consistent the skyline is, so this is pretty much just a solid blue gradient all the way across, the easier it's gonna be to blend the composition together. So I have a previous tutorial on my channel all about reflection effects using the mirror distortion effect. And this can be cool if you're trying to create an abstract reflection across a certain line. But when it comes to creating this double universe effect, I found that it doesn't actually give the exact effect that we're looking for. So I'm gonna delete that mirror effect. And what we actually wanna do is create a sort of layered composition. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option on my keyboard and click and duplicate this clip on top of itself. So now we have the same clip stacked up twice. And on this duplicated clip, I want to adjust the rotation to be 180 degrees. What that's gonna do is gonna spin it on its side so now we've got one clip up there and one clip down there, but you can see this tall building is on opposite sides for the reflection, which creates a cool spinning universe effect. Now we wanna mask out and position these properly. So if you want, you can lower the opacity for a second just to see what you're working with. And then you can move the position of the Y up on this one a bit. And let's move the position on the bottom clip down a little bit until we get just the right look that we're looking for. So now I'll go back to the top clip. I'll increase the opacity again because we were just lowering it so we could kind of see and work. And now let's create a mask. So if I click the mask, it'll create a new mask and only this portion of the new top clip will show. But let's expand this mask. So I'll click and drag these corners out because I want them to stretch across the whole sequence so there's no black area. The only part we wanna remove is the bottom half that's covering the reflection. If you double click on the program window, you can have a little bit more space to work. And once you've expanded the mask so that it covers the entire edge, we can double click back on the program window, it'll put it back into place, and you can always use the fit scale. So now I have the mask, but you can see there's a clear line of where the blue gradient doesn't match up. So if you just add a little bit of mask feathering until it kinda of disappears, you should be good to go. You can see there, it blends them in smoothly because the edge is now feathered softly. So at this point, you've got your basic effect down and you can see how this differs from just the solid reflection because as the camera spins on the bottom, it moves in the opposite direction on the top, which gives the viewer a kind of double universe seasick feeling. So the next thing I'm gonna do, just to add a little bit more flair and finish it off like the noisy version, is I'll highlight both of these, I'll right click, and I'll nest them into their own sequence. What that will do is it'll group them into one nested clip. If you want, you can always double click on it and it'll open up in your sequence timeline and you can adjust them separately. But here in the nested sequence, I'll add a little bit of rotation, maybe negative 5% to just give it a little bit of an angle and flare. And then I'll just zoom in on the scale until the edges are cleaned up again so there's no black area. From here, you could always double click back on the sequence if you want to adjust the spacing a little bit. So let's say you wanted to move the position of this a little bit more up and down just to open up that gap. You could do that. And when we go back to our original sequence, we see we've got a cool tilted and slanted effect that you can now go add to color grade and stack whatever other effects you want on top of it to give it your own unique style. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it below and subscribe to the channel if you're not to stay tuned for all of my new videos. You can follow me on social media at Justin Ode Show, like Instagram and Twitter if you wanna reach out to me and stay connected. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.